From today's perspective, the fourth generation Mustang is one of the most forgettable iterations of the iconic nameplate. Outdated chassis, generic styling, and the lack of performance, there weren't many things to like about it. However, things could have easily been completely different if one of the prototypes entered production. This was a time when the Blue Oval engineers were experimenting a lot. This was a time when the Boss 351 was almost launched. This was a time when Ford went crazy and built a V10 Mustang. And this is a story about it. The fourth generation Mustang was introduced in 1994. Back in the day, the whole world was going through rapid technological progress. It was the decade of computers and electronics and also massive advancements in the automotive industry. Just take a look at what Japanese and European automakers were doing back in the day. It was a decade of impressive achievements in the industry. Meanwhile, Ford and its famous sports car were stuck in the 1980s. The fourth generation came, but it didn't have much to offer. As mentioned, the styling was forgettable, while the good old Fox platform carried on from the previous generation, with its origins dating back to the 1970s. With the 145 horsepower six cylinder, the base version was and still is one of the worst Mustangs ever made. The V8 powered GT was much better, but still way behind its contemporary rival Chevy Camaro in pretty much every aspect. The only way out was to offer something special. As we got closer to the end of the decade, Ford finally started rolling out performance-oriented variants. The excellent SVT Cobra was there while the Mach 1 arrived a few years later. Although great, these models were still overshadowed by rivals from GM such as the Chevy Corvette. So Ford management had no other option but to go completely crazy and offer something never seen before in a Mustang, something that wouldn't just dominate the GM competitors but also make supercars like Dodge Viper run for their money. It was time for a V10 Mustang. A project like no other. The era of the Fox body Mustang was coming to its end, and Ford was already developing the fifth generation. However, a group of enthusiasts within the engineering department wanted another try to offer something different. The idea was to develop a 10-cylinder Mustang and completely change the paradigm of the American muscle car universe, which has always been predominantly about V8 engines. The project was led by Kevin Bird, a guy you may know from the Two Guys Garage TV show. What's interesting is that it wouldn't be the first time to see a Ford V10 engine. The Blue Oval Company just finished the development of the now legendary Triton V10 engine, but that engine was meant for heavy-duty pickup trucks. The team of engineers didn't want just raw power, they wanted something refined and precise, something light, something that could put the Mustang into the supercar territory. The only way to do that was to develop a completely new engine with drastic changes in the design approach with an aluminum block, short stroke, high winding modular V10. They believed that such an engine would eventually trigger the company's management and draw it into more exotic projects, into building supercars. Unfortunately, the management wasn't particularly thrilled with this idea. Working with no resources and by not being particularly thrilled with the idea, we think of the management's decision not to invest a single cent into this project. The company's performance divisions, Ford Racing and SVT SVE, didn't participate either. No, this was an adventure of a small group of engineers, a romantic story about passion, enthusiasm and most importantly, creativity. So the first step was to find a basis for the new Ultimate V10 engine. As mentioned, the Triton V10 was already there, but it wasn't exactly a good fit for a sports car. First of all, its dimensions wouldn't allow it to fit under the hood without heavier modifications, but most importantly, its iron block made it too heavy for performance car applications. Instead, the core of the new engine was the 4.6-litre block from the standard Mustang, an 8-cylinder engine. And how do you make it a V10? Well, by sewing off the front of the engine and mating it to another 4.6-litre unit. 
it was a pretty creative move that ensured the engine had much needed short deck height and a proper timing cover. It was a cut and paste game full of improvisation. After the block, the next move was to figure out the head, and of course the choice was pretty easy. Engineers took the one from the Cobra R, the dual overhead unit, because that was the best piece of engineering Ford had back in the day. It was a piece of aluminum that guaranteed the engine could stand way over 400 horsepower. Then the real game of creativity started with the crankshaft design. It was time for heavy modifications because engineers didn't want to use a split pin design. Instead, the idea was to use an odd fire crankshaft along with a common spit layout. That was the only way to line up the head and firing position. ECU and other troubles. With no resources and not much time left, the engineers needed to figure out the electric control unit quickly. The only problem was that Ford didn't have anything that would work well with the new engine. There was no time and money to modify the V8 ECU from the regular Mustang, while Triton's ECU wasn't compatible for obvious reasons we talked about a few moments ago. It was designed for a split pin even fire crank with a balance shaft, not for a common spit layout out with the odd fire crankshaft. Still, engineers found a creative solution. They figured out that the Triton's ECU may not work with the new engine, but two of them could. They figured out that this EEC V unit could run an inline 5 engine, so they decided to wire up two ECUs, each controlling one side of the engine. Essentially, it was like two engines in one. It wasn't just about the ECU. Other parts of the engine, like mass air meters, crank, cams, throttle position, and water temperature sensors were doubled up as well. And guess what? That wasn't the end of heavy modifications. While it was possible to pull some parts from the bin, others needed to be made from scratch. An oil pan was one of these things, just like the intake manifold, which was taken from the 2000 Cobra R and upgraded with the Crossram design and equipped with plenums fed by 70mm throttle bodies. Time to find a mule. Months of after-hour work finally paid off. The engine was done and ready for installment. The outcome was great, one of the most impressive engines Ford had made until then. An aluminum engine with 6.1 liters, or if you prefer, 351 cubic inches in displacement. The engine was smooth, refined, and seemed pretty capable. The only thing left was to find a mule and start assembling. Eventually, engineers found an old 1999 Cobra R mule. The 5.4 liter, four valve was out and the new 6.1 liter was in. The best thing of all was that the new engine fit like a glove. Moreover, that mule already had a six-speed manual installed with a nine-inch rear, so engine to firewall spacing remained unchanged. At the front, the engine added just four inches. In other words, the new engine was installed without any modification, and although slightly bigger, it was actually 60 pounds lighter than the iron block 5.4 liter Cobra R unit. It was time for a test drive. Test drive. The engine was installed and the mule was ready for a test drive. The measurements showed quite respectable results. The max output of 426 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. These were quite respectable numbers back in the day, but the engine showed its real character only at the test track. With the lighter nose and more torque and power, the Boss 351 was notably more agile than the Cobra R. But you know, Mustangs were never about the track performance. It was time to check it at the straight line, Mustang's natural habitat, and the results were nothing but impressive. Soon enough, it became clear that the engine really loves high revving, way more than a typical American muscle car. 7,000 RPMs were its comfort zone, and you know that high revs are always a good thing when it comes to drag races. Eventually, after a couple of sprints, the V10 Mustang proved it could complete a quarter mile in just 11.5 seconds seconds at a speed close to 120 miles per hour. From today's perspective, you may not be impressed with these numbers, but back then that was a superior sprint when compared to the rest of the Mustang's lineup. For comparison, a typical Mustang GT of the era would normally go around 13.7 seconds, while the best supercharged Cobra ever did was 12.83 seconds at the speed of 110 miles per hour. Ford engineers knew they created something special. Not exactly a happy ending story. So far, everything sounds like a nice romantic story, 
but unfortunately, there is no happy ending in this one. The new prototype was completed and it performed exceptionally well, but the management still didn't want it to make it to production. First of all, the fourth generation Mustang was at the end of its production cycle and there probably wasn't enough time. The new engine didn't find its place under the new generation either, for obvious reasons. Production costs, limited sales numbers, and regulatory compliance. There were many reasons not to go into this adventure, but from this time distance, it's obvious that the management wasn't aware of the importance of the Boss 351. Or maybe they simply did not have enough courage to risk with it, because traditional customers were already happy with V8's performance. For one reason or another, Ford missed a big opportunity to create an eternal icon, a legend that would live up to these days and possibly establish a new design approach that would elevate Mustang as a brand to the next level. The Blue Oval Company had a chance to give to the world one of the most iconic models of the era, but instead, all we have is a good story to remember. What do you think about the Boss 351 prototype? Is this one of the biggest mistakes Ford has ever made? What would modern day Mustangs look like if this V10 monster was ever released? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe and hit the bell button so you can enjoy more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.